promised, here we are at the tennis. So uh, we're on our way to the main arenas now. The gates are literally just open, so there won't be any tennis for a while. But as you can see, there's a lot going on, lots of people. We have general admission, ground pass tickets, which means we don't get into the fancy courts and arenas, but there's still lots to see and do. And there's a chance we may go and watch Novak Djokovic uh, practicing later, but I'm no fan of his, so who knows? Might change your mind about that. Anyway, I'll catch up with you later. So here we are. We are in the uh, John Kane Arena. On the Actually, there's only two we can't get into with our tickets, and uh, currently some people are fiddling up all about a bit. <laughs> Will's having some breakfast, so we've found some seats, and now we're just waiting for things to kick off.
this is us leaving the Australian Open is behind us we have got a train to catch because we're in and out today we're not staying in the city so we're having to head off we weren't able to see the end of the Norrie tennis match which is a pity so it's shaping up to be a really good one but uh, maybe next time anyway I'll catch up with you back at home quite probably or at least somewhere that's not the city well, we're back from the tennis now and I'm turning my attention to Operation Gate. We actually spent um, a large portion of yesterday with Will's parents to break the journey. And then when we get, got home, I cracked on with, you guessed it, mowing the lawns. And Will cracked on with putting bracing on this post here. So what that involved was cutting a notch in the post. He also cut a um, mortise and tenon joint. So it isn't just resting in there, it's actually sort of lodged in there. He then partially buried the end of it and braced it with rocks, uh, which is the usual way of doing it here because our ground is so rocky. We're yet to do the other one, but that's less important in the sense that it's only going to bear the weight of the gate latch. But this one is going to be bearing the entire weight of the gate and actually a longer span of the fence. So this will be under a lot more force, as I think I mentioned. But now that that's been done, what I can do is tighten the fence back up. When I say tighten... <laughs> Uh, tightening a wire fence is a skill and the problem is this fence is this portion of the fence is so slack anyway it will only be possible to tighten it so far but this is the equipment that I will be using as you can see it's quite basic but I've got my wire cutters to cut them to length if I need to and this is the device that you use to tighten the wires so basically it goes through the hole and then you use this like a lever to wrap the wire around and try to keep it under tension. So that's what I am going to attempt to do now. Here we go then. Just sort of look a bit rough and ready. But I have tried my best. It's actually quite hard to get the um, fence wires particularly taut. On this sort of span, you'll notice that um, the fence posts are much closer together. In an ideal world, there'd probably be one there and one there and then the paste. But um, we're not that fussed about animals getting in. And obviously, we're not looking to keep stock in. So um, it doesn't really matter. And of course, there's going to be a great big gate there anyway. But it is under some sort of tension. It's probably no worse than it was before. This was a natural dip where the fence is so uh, loose, you could just walk over it. So it's better than that. Uh, the first one didn't go so well, but uh, as I went on, my skills did somewhat improve. So I'm pleased about that. Anyway, I'm off to have lunch, but I'm glad I've got that done. The further away you stand, the less bad it looks. So <laughs> I'll, I'll live with that. If this was autumn in the UK, I'd be living for this. But anyway, summer in Australia isn't always what you think it is. Uh, I'm heading down to look at the new gate project. There are one or two tweaks that Will and I have realised that we'd like to make. Uh, first of all, the smaller of the two fence posts hasn't set as well as we'd like, so we're thinking we might look to concrete that in as well. And also, <laughs> we both came to the conclusion that the job that I did on tightening the uh, wires around the uh, bigger of the fence posts was a little suboptimal. Um, so we're going to try doing that again. I had actually also forgotten that I had a um, tightening tool, which was a Christmas present from Will's parents to me a couple of years ago. So um, 
just clearly went out of my mind, so I didn't even think to use that. So we're going to try again. Um, Will's currently not here, but when he gets home, I think we'll, we'll maybe, maybe have a, a look at doing that. I'm just heading down there now to see what's what. It's actually quite hard to get these wires very taut because it, it, it's quite a long span and the post at the other end got uh, a bit damaged in the fire and there's a lot of slack on the length of this fence from the uh, post they're attached to up to here but uh, Will thinks that we can maybe get them <laughs> a bit taller. They're still more taut than they were um, they were basically like on the ground so it's better but um, apparently we may be able to get it better still and the benefit of that is that um, the wires will pull the post this way the bracing will push the post this way so as Will tells me apparently that will help the gate uh, stay in a better position it'll mean because it'll mean that the post won't um, have the ability to move so much and that's a very long span and it's a very heavy gate so um that's one thing but as i say this post hasn't set as well as you'd like <laughs> you can probably see <laughs> so whilst it's not actually bearing weight per se it would still be good if it was better so I'm going to see if whilst I was away I can do something about that. Well, that came out maybe a bit easier than it should. Here's what I'm left with. I'm going to go mix up the concrete that we bought, add it to the hole, and then uh, try that again. Okay, that's done. And now I'm going to go through my box of fence doing, fence making equipment. Here we are. Let's see if I can find that. Uh, these are fence cutters. Uh, <laughs> fencing pliers. Not too sure. How you use those. Anyway, um, this is what I'm looking for. Um, maybe that. Uh, these are things that you can use to tension the fence as well. That's something to do with it. <laughs> not sure about that. And this is the device that I used to tie it off. So what I think I'll do is, before Will gets home, I'll see if I can um, use this to undo what I've already done. And then hopefully we can take it from there. Um, I'm glad that the fence paste stuff's done there. I deliberately went for all this quick set stuff because I thought that would make life a lot easier. Should basically be set in about 20 minutes, although I guess it says that, but it'll probably take a bit longer. Anyway, let's see what we can do. Right, well that was pretty easy. Put that back. Now what I need to try and do is remember how this works. I was Shane, but quite some time ago, a couple of years ago, and uh, I just didn't have a memory for that sort of thing if I'm not doing it over and over again. So, um, fingers crossed there's a YouTube video. <laughs> Otherwise, not sure. One of the things I'm doing this afternoon is some running repairs on the range. Now's a good time of year to do that sort of thing because we're not that far off the range running 24 hours a day, seven days a week to supply our hot water and cooking needs. But now it's not, so I can get on with doing this little job here. So I've got a pot of this ready to use range mortar. 
because I've noticed that one of the problems with the rain is that it can smoke and that's because it's been allowed to overheat at, at some point in the past we inherited this and it's bowed and it's got all sorts of holes and if I can show you underneath here which is where I'm working smoke can spill out and there's evidence further along that of um, an old mortar layer, but most of it's fallen out. And I think that's creating the gap that the smoke can get out of. So obviously this, the range isn't that well sealed. So what I've been doing is, I've done half of it, is putting a new line of mortar on that joint to hopefully mean come winter. And that's one less place for the smoke to escape. There we go. Nice cinder, mortared in. Fingers crossed that helps at least some of the smoke stay in the range and get out of the chimney rather than coming into the house. It is one of the main drawbacks of this range. I don't think it's intrinsically the range's fault. It just has been a bit abused over the years and uh, the smoke coming into the house is very suboptimal. So um, fingers crossed that will help.